hello friends let's get started in today's video we are going to talk about vpc endpoints so what are vpc endpoints let's assume we have a vpc and within the vpc we have two subnets uh, one could be a public and others a private subnet and within these subnets we have deployed our ec2 instance now let's assume you want to connect your ec2 instance through s3 bucket so generally how we do is that your all the traffic from your ec2 instance will be routed to an internet gateway and via the internet gateway it connects to the s3 bucket so this is your ec2 instance and there is a router and the router refers the route table and then it connects to the internet gateway and via this internet gateway it connects to the public internet network and through that it talks to your s3 so this solution is pretty good but the problem here is that when you're transferring sensitive information or sensitive sensitive data there is always a risk when you transfer those sensitive information through a public internet right so to address this amazon vpc has come up with something called vpc endpoints so vpc endpoints is another component like internet gateway so instead of the request which gets routed through your internet gateway the request directly gets routed through your vpc endpoints and via your vpc endpoint it connects to your s3 so the whole advantage here is that this does not connect to the public internet and the, it uses amazon internal network private network to connect to your aws resources so there is no risk of exposing your sensitive information via public network this network is powered by a, a aws uh, private network and we call this as VPC gateway endpoints. Now, this is another uh, diagram which you can refer from AWS documentation. So we have a, a VPC within a region and that has two private subnets. And one of the subnet has a EC2 instance with an elastic IP address. And the traditional way of doing it is the VP EC2 instance is connecting to your router and the router here we have connected uh, the all the uh, communication to an internet id so hence the router sends the traffic to an internet gateway and through the internet gateway it connects to your s3 bucket right so little different we are just adding a new component called vpc endpoints so here we will be uh, the destination will be the id of the amazon s3 and the target will be the vpc endpoint id so whenever you're trying to connect to the s3 bucket the connection will go to the vpc endpoint i'm sorry it will as usual go to the router and the router will check okay all the uh, tar you know all the requests for this amazon s3 should go via vpc id so it transfers the request to the corresponding vpc endpoint and through vpc endpoint it the traffic is routed to the s3 bucket so this is a pretty much a straightforward uh, uh, straightforward solution but here the maximum AWS resources that you can connect is an S3 bucket and a DynamoDB, right? So VPC gateway, the VPC gateway endpoints is one solution to uh, securely communicate between your AWS resources since it supports only S3 and DynamoDB. To whenever you have to communicate with these resources, you can use VPC gateway endpoints. So before we go to another form of endpoints, let us first revisit whatever we have seen till now. So VPC endpoints enables you to privately connect your VPC to supported AWS services. So you need to check what all AWS services are supported. If you're going for gateway endpoints, it supports only two services, which is S3 and a DynamoDB. The VPC endpoint services powered by AWS private link. So when we talk about the net private network, other than the internet, so there's something called AWS private link via which uh, the resources are communicated. So without requiring an internet gateway, so you don't require an internet gateway or a NAT device or a VPN connection to communicate to other VP AWS resources. The communication happens via AWS private link. The traffic between your VPC and other services, in our case, in our previous example, the traffic between your EC2 instance and your S3 bucket when the traffic is routed, it does not have to leave the Amazon network. Now, in traditional cases, what happens is that the traffic is routed via Internet Gateway and it has to connect to the public Internet to talk to the other 
S3 AWS resources, right? But in this case, you don't have to communicate, you don't, you don't have to connect to any network outside the VPC, it's all internal. So th that's what it means, it does not have to leave the Amazon network. Now what are these endpoints? Endpoints are virtual devices, they are managed by AWS, so they are horizontally scaled and they are highly available. They allow communication between the instances in your VPC and services without imposing availability risk or bandwidth constraint on your network traffic. So whenever you connect via Internet Gateway, there is always a risk of bandwidth. But when we are connected via AWS private link, we don't have to worry about the bandwidth or the availability since it is all managed by AWS. So this is the endpoint which we just saw in our previous diagram, which is called gateway endpoints. So gateway endpoint is a gateway that is specified as a target for a route in your route table for traffic distant to a supported AWS service. The following AWS services are S3 and DynamoDB. So that's what we have just seen in our previous diagram. So wherever you want to route the request, suppose you want to connect to the S3, the PID of the Amazon S3 will be the destination and the target will be the VPC endpoint ID. So the prefix of VPC endpoint ID always starts with VPC, VPCE hyphen, the ID of the VPC endpoint. So whenever your EC2, EC2 instance wants to communicate with the Amazon S3 bucket, it will come and the router will check the route table and it will say, okay, the target is via VPC endpoint and all the network traffic will be routed to VPC endpoint. And from VPC endpoint, it will connect to the S3 bucket. So, so far we have seen only one form of endpoints, which is gateway endpoints. The next we are gonna see is interface endpoints. So what is interface endpoints? So uh, let's start from beginning. We have a VPC and we have two subnets like our previous diagram, a public and a private subnet. Now similarly, here our EC2 instance wants to communicate with the AWS resource. It could be S3 or a CloudWatch or a, a KMS or a code build or anything of that sort. So for each services we create uh, before going further, and traditionally, how this happens is your EC2 instance will communicate with your internet gateway and via your internet gateway, it will communicate with any one of the AWS resource. But with this VPC interface endpoints, we create elastic network identifier called ENI and this will be in hosted in a different subnet within the same VPC and each ENI device will have its own private IP address. So this ENI is linked to a particular uh, AWS resources. So whenever your EC2 instance wants to communicate with these resources, it will first communicate, it will first uh, set up a communication between the ENI and that ENI will route the request to the specific AWS resources. Now this is a private network and this is a private network. So the whole communication happens within the uh, VPC uh, private link, which we have just discussed before right so this is another way of uh, communicating with your interface endpoints now there are so many uh, aws resources that vpc interface endpoint supports compared to the gateway interface which we have seen previously it supports only two aws resource which is s3 and dynamo but when it, when it comes to interface endpoints through eni it supports a handful of aws resources so let us let us go through this diagram from our AWS documentation. So your EC2 instance, traditionally, it will first connect to the Internet Gateway through the default DNS name, and the Internet Gateway will route the request to an Amazon Kinesis via Internet. So it's a round, it's like a whole U-turn which is taking, it first connects to the public Internet, and from public Internet, it will connect to the Amazon Kinesis. Now, whenever you create any Amazon resource like an S3 or Amazon Kinesis, it creates a DNS name for you. So your EC2 instance will connect to this resource through their DNS name, right? So when you're connecting through your default DNS name, it will first go to Internet Gateway and from Internet Gateway, it will communicate through the specific AWS resource. But a different approach could be instead of communicating through Internet Gateway, you talk to the corresponding endpoint net network interface and through the ne endpoint network interface the communication is sent to the corresponding AWS resource right so whenever you create an ENI it comes up with a, 
specific DNS host name which is different from the default DNS name and your EC2 installs will directly communicate with this endpoint specific DNS host name and that will know which EC which AWS resource to connect to so this is again a private link you don't have to connect to the public internet so your communication is totally safe and secure again the network interface endpoint is an elastic network interface with a private IP from the IP address range of your subnet that serves as an entry point for traffic destined to a supported services so let's go back to our presentation so as we have seen this ENI are hosted in a sub private subnet so each ENI has a private IP address and this private IP address has been assigned based on the range which you give when you create your subnet so that's what the first point says and second point the interface endpoints are powered via AWS private link so that's it for today's video we have seen what is VPC endpoints and how they make your communication from your VPC to other AWS resources very secure without connecting to the public internet so there are two ways you can either go for interface endpoints or you can go for the first one which we have seen that is gateway endpoints so gateway endpoint supports only two resources whereas interface endpoint supports a handful of resources if you want you can also go through the aws official documentation let me go through that site so this is the aws official documentation for interface vpc endpoints you can just see the number of resources it supports you know starting from amazon api gateway to i can just keep scrolling athena aurora cloud formation cloud trail data exchange ec2 so there are a huge number of resources that your um, interface endpoint supports compared to your gateway endpoints so guys this is it for today's video in the next video we will talk about a vpc demo we will see how to create a, a custom vpc so we have almost covered all the vpc components uh, which is required for you to know before you start jumping into your demo session and before you start creating a vpc and so the next session will be pretty interesting we will jump with a demo where i'll show you how to create a vpc so until then goodbye and have a good day thank you